I made my opponent rage quit while he had a 3 to 1 firepower advantage and turned certain defeat to victory with one bold move. If you want to find out how, let me explain it from the top. This is a multiplayer 1v1 match in the Homeworld Remastered version where I play as the Higaran faction against a player using the same faction. So a mirror match, meaning we use the exact same units. The opening is straightforward, with both the mothership and carrier being used as resource drop-off points and producing new resource collectors to get the economy going. I will dedicate a future video to the topic of best opening eco, so we will skip forward a bit. I send my first wing of scout ships to check out my enemy and find his mothership alone with a bunch of resource collectors just like my own and a wing of interceptors. Next I send my scouts to the other resource patch to locate his carrier. Since I want to have some fun and gamble on the idea he won't mass produce interceptors, I start producing bombers and plan to send them to his mobile refineries and carrier to harass his resource harvesting operations. As expected, I find his operation at the next asteroid field and decide to use my newly researched EMP special attack to disable his mobile refinery. I lose my wing of scouts due to misclicking on the first pass and because the mobile refinery is armed. But the most important part of this attack is disrupting my enemy's concentration and forcing him to follow my lead, meaning to react to my attacks instead of planning out his. My own resource collection operation is left behind by my mothership and carrier in the hands of a few mobile refineries, and those two main ships move forward to the center, where I want to take over the resource-rich asteroids. Taking up this position in a team game is usually a bad idea because you are close for enemies to attack and far from your ally to support you. But in a 1v1 game you can play aggressively like this, especially since less experienced players will focus on your new center map position and leave your other resource collection operations alone, meaning you do not have to spend resources on units to guard them. At this point, my capital class facility is ready on my mothership and I start building a second carrier. I need it because once I start constructing destroyers at my mothership, which takes a long time, I will need new production capacity for other types of ships. In the meantime, my interceptors reach the enemy's secondary resource collection operation and just as I explained and expected, my opponent has a ready force of interceptors guarding it with even more on the way. I totally botched this engagement as I was planning my next moves, research options and ship construction, so it was a waste of resources for me once again with only the bright side of keeping my opponent on guard and maybe messing up his plans for ships he wanted to construct in peace and quiet. The center position was left unoccupied and I started to mass ships at it by sending my scouts, bombers, torpedo frigates and resource collectors there. Unfortunately, this is when a mass of interceptors show up and blow my bombers to bits in seconds. I retaliate by using EMP with scouts to slow down this wave of interceptors, but I do not have the right tool for the job of dealing with a mass of them. This is why I start investing in flak frigate research and production, as well as gunship corvettes. Since my mothership is about to reach the center position, I also invest in a fire control center, so all ships near my mothership get a boost to their firepower. The torpedo frigates are hopelessly outmatched right now against the interceptors and I decide to at least use them to draw the enemy ships away from the center as he has not yet discovered that my mothership is almost there. The plan works and instead of pressing his advantage the enemy player fearing for his own resource collectors keeps chasing after my torpedo frigates. My second carrier arrives at this point and serves as both a drop-off point for my resource collectors and a manufacturing line for more ships. Instead of investing in destroyers as originally planned and even researched, I now use my mothership to produce those flak frigates and my carriers to produce gunship corvettes. Now the game starts to heat up as my enemy is back in force and I have very few ships to combat his wings of interceptors. But just the sight and a few shots from the two flak frigates is enough to make him rethink his attack. 
My issue is that now he knows my mothership is at the center of the map and even worse, that I have no capital ships to defend it with. This is why I stopped the production of flag frigates and start making destroyers at the mothership. Realistically speaking, I am behind on eco and military because I lost many more ships than I destroyed and I lost lots of time my opponent most likely spent building his own destroyers. And only a minute later, I know that I am right because my scout ship detects the first enemy destroyer, coming straight for my mothership, with a huge escort of interceptors and some torpedo frigates coming as well. Once again, I keep attacking his resource collecting operation with scouts and EMP attacks on the mobile refinery while thinking how to defend my mothership and carrier at the center. This time, I do the EMP attack correctly and back off. And with the long range sensors of my scouts, I can actually see my opponent pulling back his interceptors because of my sneaky EMP attack endangering his asteroid mining. I figure this is my opportunity to attack the lone destroyer and send my other scouts forward to EMP it. Unfortunately, the interceptors come back, probably because I didn't follow up my EMP attack on the mobile refinery with any bombers or anything and my scouts just get destroyed, achieving nothing more than being a nuisance. Luckily for me, I have many more. Knowing full well I am outgunned and my first destroyer is just getting launched by my mothership, I start my attack run with everything I have despite that being all the wrong ships for attacking an enemy destroyer. The new scouts I use to MP everything in sight, managing to slow down both the response from his frigates and interceptors. With my first destroyer in the fight, I now have to invest in tech for resource collectors to double as repair ships if I want to keep my investment in capital ships flying and fighting as long as possible. In the heat of battle, it is not easy to manually target these little repair ships and they can keep a ship shooting for considerably longer, especially since you can have multiple ones repairing a huge ship. The flag frigates might be hopelessly outgunned by the destroyer, but they quickly rack up many interceptor kills, decimating the wings that destroyed so many of my ships. On the other hand, I take heavy losses to my corvettes as they get targeted by the enemy's missile frigates as they are a hard counter to them. All this happens as my destroyer finally gets target lock on the enemies who is at this point going to initiate a fighting retreat. He still has a fair bit of HP left on it, but that thing is very slow and considering he had to change direction completely to retreat and is all alone now, I have a chance to take it down. My newly produced bombers are given orders to target its engine subsystems and as my enemy realizes that, he comes back into the fight with all his remaining ships. I do think you should always try to fight with all of your combat ready units at the same time, as that way you have the most guns and armor in the fight at the same time. The more you give up on and send units back, the higher losses the remaining ships are going to have and quicker. Of course, the interceptor wings were sent back to the capital ships for the wings to be replenished, which is cheaper than building new ones. This is something I tried to do with my corvette wings, but failed as they were targeted and annihilated by those torpedo frigates faster than I could do that. Since I saw that corvettes were outdated in this fight, I had to jump a step and start producing ion cannon frigates to deal with the inevitable second wave of enemy frigates and new destroyers. The enemy destroyer finally goes up in a ball of superheated plasma and the enemy player sounds the retreat. A reprieve I sorely needed to repair and rebuild as well as plan what to invest my high resource stockpiles. That actually isn't a good thing as I should have been spending those as they came in and optimized my production according to my resource collection. I may have secured a very extensive resource spot with this fight, but it was a costly one and it also cost me in the time I could have spent better organizing my production, research and capital ship upgrades. The next few minutes were quiet and I managed to get a small fleet built and organized with the core made up of two destroyers and several ion cannon frigates. I started the building of my shipyard and planned to produce my battlecruiser in it because I saw that the battle was going up in tonnage fast 
and I needed my own big guns to keep myself in the fight. Not long after, the enemy's new destroyer came into my sensor range while I decided to harvest what was left of his first one. As before, I used the same tactic of harassing the enemy ships with EMP strikes from my scout wings. They are cheap and fast to both build and deploy, but ultimately they are more of a delaying and annoyance tactic than anything else. Just like my harassment of his asteroid mining operations, where I sent a bomber wing to make my enemy split his focus on attack and defense. And he had a full attack in place, with not one, not two, but three destroyers in a line from his production capital ships to my mothership position. Quickly, he figured out he was out of formation and stringed along on his path to my position, so as you can see on the map, he stopped and backtracked with his leading ship to gather up his forces into a cohesive attack group. This time around, my enemy starts his attack with his wings of interceptors, which I stop dead in its tracks with EMPs from my scouts, forcing him to retreat after just one pass all the while planning and sending out more attack sorties against his harvesting operation. Going so far from my mothership in this active defense does prevent my ships from benefiting from the mothership's fire control center, which is not the best move on my part. Once again, we have a pause in the fighting, which we both use to order more ships to be built and research done to improve those ships' offensive and defensive characteristics. I am still in the stage of researching the tech to even construct battlecruisers when I see on my sensors that my enemy has not only researched and built one, but sent it half the way to my mothership. This was quite the shock, and even my successful bomber attacks on his collectors and mobile refinery feels hollow at this point. Once again, I am outgunned and by a huge margin. One battlecruiser supported by three destroyers is a huge deal when I do not have the firepower to deal with it. And the bombers I sent to attack the enemy mobile refinery would have been much more useful here helping me target and destroy the battlecruiser's weapon subsystems. The twin ion cannon turrets on it alone strip a destroyer of his armor and HP in seconds. But I kept my cool and hit the battlecruiser with everything I have opening up with the EMPs which I actually needed many more of to affect it in any way. So take note of my mistake and mass scouts for numerous simultaneous EMP strikes if you want to achieve success with those. The mismatch of firepower is keenly felt as I start losing my frigates against the BC and DD firepower. BC and DD being short for battlecruiser and destroyer. While the fireworks are going off in the main battle and the sideshow with the asteroids where interceptors arrive, I finally start construction of my own first battlecruiser. The question is, will I still have a mothership by the time it is completed? The concentrated firepower of all my various ship types does manage to disable one of the BC's ion cannon turrets and that will help keep my ships in one piece for a bit longer. But now I have to try and take out the other one, with an already depleted fleet while the enemy just added a fourth destroyer to his own fleet, as well as his own gunships and corvettes which pick off my own at a fast pace. So this is the moment I make the crucial decision to stop trying to outgun my opponent and outplay him. Instead of constructing more ion cannon frigates for example, I invest my resources and production lines into marine frigates, the only ships capable of actually capturing enemy battlecruisers on the spot. My three destroyers now fight a desperate delaying battle with even one of my carriers which I sent to offer fire control center support and close by ship production. Of course, soon after one of my destroyers is dust and another is close to becoming scrap too, while the third is already at half of its HP. To make a famous quote, fleet, this isn't going well. With the loss of my DDs, the carrier is left alone and an easy target. I am trying to rebuild, but with just 3 manufacturing lines for ships and with the one at the shipyard busy with the BCs, which takes forever to build, it is a slow process. The carrier is already a pile of dust and resources added to what is left of the DDs and the enemy fleet is on its way to my mothership. Some might have surrendered at this point, but not me as I had one last card to play.
As I prepared for the final showdown, I add the resource collectors to follow and repair the DDs while my own BC is finally coming out of the shipyard. A fire control center on it would be ideal, but with the proximity to my mothership at this point, also not exactly necessary. For the marine frigates, I have a special plan. I am keeping them above the plane of battle and well above the approaching enemy DDs in BC. So when the engagement range is reached, only the main ships of the line start to fight and my marine frigates stay out of the range of the enemy's cannons and missiles. And this is the moment when I spring my trap and roll the dice. With my opponent leaving his capital ships completely devoid of any escorts, I send in all my marine frigates to capture that battlecruiser. As they enter the sensor and weapons range of the enemy ships, they open fire on them. But I have upgraded them and they can take a punch or two, while not only are they flying straight to the enemy ships, but the enemy ships are flying towards them as well. A speedy date is inevitable at this point, with me losing only one marine frigate in the advance. And this is where the enemy player rage quits, despite his raw firepower advantage as he realizes his battlecruiser would become my own in a minute. And that my fellow gamers is that. I hope you learned a lot in this match, click the card for more such videos, thank you for watching and happy gaming.